A hearty welcome to the presentation of our hip model. The caput femoris articulatus in the hip joint with the acetabulum. The acetabulum is a structure of the ossa coxae, which is formed by the three bones os ichi, os pubis, and os ilium. The fossa atsubili is situated in the center of the acetabulum, here under the model. The end branches of the arteria obturatoria run into the fossa acetabuli. It supplies the femoral head with blood. This takes place until the early stages of adulthood. Later on, the blood supply takes place by the arteriae circumflexae femoris medialis et laterialis. To provide the hip joint with more stability, the acetabulum ossifius around the caput femoris as labrum ossetabuli. If this bony edge of the cranial is not formed during the development, then we speak of a hip dysplasia. In small children, recurring luxations, which have to be operated, occur. The articular capsule runs from the acetabulum over the caput femoris up to approximately the linea intertrochanterica. There are several ligaments on the hip to strengthen the articular capsule. For one, the ligamentum illofemorale has to be mentioned. It stretches from the os ilium to the ventral side of the model to the linea intertrochanterica, approximately all the way to the caudal origin of the articulate capsule. It is the strongest ligament in the human body. As second ligament, the ligamentum ischiofemorale runs on the dorsal inside of the os ischi to the crista intertrochanterica. With the ligamentum pubofemorale, these two ligaments form the zona orbicularis. The zona orbicularis runs in a circular form around the column femoris and provides stability and hold to the hip joint. Furthermore, these three ligaments prevent an overextension of the hip joint. In other words, it tautens with extension and relaxes at flexion. The hip joint is a nut joint, in which the following movements can be performed. On the one hand, flexion and extension is possible. On the other, an inner rotation and outer rotation. And thirdly, adduction and abduction. The femur stands in a very specific position. The diaphysis of the femur with the condylin stands in a very specific angle to the caput and column femoris. This angle is called the centrum column diaphysis angle, or CCD angle for short. The angle is reduced as one gets older. If this angle is pathological, that means if it deviates from the normal range, it can result in a wrong position in the hip joint, which can lead to damage to the hip and insufficiencies in the musculature. The size of the CCD angle in newborns is 140 degrees, which diminishes with the aging process. In adults, the angle is 125 degrees, with a minimum of 120 degrees. If the angle is smaller than 120 degrees, we call it a coxavara. If it is greater than 140 degrees, we call it a coxavalga. In both cases, it has to be corrected by means of an operation. Now we come to the musculature of the hip joint. The musculus iliacus belongs to the inner hip muscles, originating from the os ilium. Furthermore, the musculus psoas major belongs to the inner joint muscles, originating from the lower chest and upper lumbar spine. They pull on a joint fasci, the fasci ilaca, through the lacuna musculorum to the trochanter minor. They are inverted by the nervus femoralis from the plexus lumbalis. Their main function is to facilitate the hip flexion. If this musculature suffers from insufficiency, the patient will have trouble to climb stairs. At the rear of this model, we see the musculus gluteus maximus. 
In the human anatomy, it overlays the musculus gluteus medius and minimus. In this model, the musculus gluteus maximus is truncated. It originates from the os ilium, from the fascia thoracolumbalis, from the sacrum and coccyx, as well as from the ligamentum sacrotuberale, and stretches to the tuberositas glutea. Its main functions are to facilitate the extension and outer rotation of the hip joint. The muscle is innerverted by the nervous gluteus inferior. The musculus gluteus medius and its detachment, the musculus gluteus minimus, originate from the os ilium and runs to the trochanter major. They participate in the abduction and are inverted by the nervous gluteus superior. If the use of the muscle of the nervous gluteus superior is lost, Leaning or dropping to the free leg side is the result. This phenomenon is called the Trendelenburg sign. The musculus quadratus femoris belongs to the deeper hip muscles. It stretches from the tuber ischiaticum to the crista intertocanterica. It is inverted from the plexus sacralis through the nervi musculi quadratus femoris. Its function is the outer rotation and adduction of the hip joint. Furthermore, on the dorsal side, we see the musculus piriformis. The musculus piriformis originates on the ventral side of osacrum, stretches through the foramen ischiaticum magus, divides this foramen ischiaticum magus into a foramen suprapiriforme and infrapiriforme, and lastly reaches all the way to the trochanter major. The muscle is innerverted by branches of the plexus sacralis. Its main function is the outer rotation and abduction of the hip joint. The arteria and vena glutea superior and the nervous gluteus superior run through the foramen suprapiriforme. The vena glutea inferior, nervous gluteus inferius, arteria and vena pudenta interior, nervous pudentus internus, nervous cadentus femoris lateralis, and nervous ischiaticus run through the foramen infrapiriforme. The arteria and vena pudenta interna as well as the nervous pudentus then run back through the foramen ischiaticum minus and further on in a facial doubling of the musculus obturatorius, the Alcock canal. Finally we see the musculus obturatorius internus on the model, here visible on the dorsal side. It similarly originates on the ventral side of the membrana obturatoria, which covers the foramen obturatorium. It then stretches through the foramen ischiaticum minus, bends, as one can see here, down at a right angle and then stretches to the fossa trochanterica. Its function relates to the outer rotation, and it is innervated by branches of the plexus sacralis. The foramen obturatorium is lined by the membrana obturatoria and the musculus obturatorius internus. A small opening, the canalis obturatorius, which we see here, is left untouched. The canalis obturatorius internus contains the nervus obturatorius, the arteria and the vena obturatoria.